Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome on this glorious morning. We are delighted to have all of you here to share this unique celebration of Constitution Day and Naturalization Day 2018, and most especially, our candidates for citizenship and your families. I will ask you all now please to stand, and at this time the Southwoods Middle School Vocal Jazz Choir, under the direction of Miss Emily Klonowski, will lead us in the singing of our national anthem. Thank you so much for that wonderful rendition of the National Anthem. Please be seated. Once again, I want to extend a welcome to all of you, our soon-to-be new American citizens, as well as the members of your families and friends who are here to celebrate this momentous occasion with you. My name is Kathleen Tomlinson, and I am a United States Magistrate Judge here in the Eastern District of New York. Along with my fellow judges who are here today, as well as the members of the Federal Bar Association, the National Park Service, and our courthouse staff and family, I welcome you here on this beautiful and historic day. What a joy for us it is to preside over this extraordinarily special occasion. I know that my colleagues agree that this is one of the very best things federal judges get to do. Normally, just one judge conducts the naturalization ceremonies in our courthouse in Central Islip. Today, you have eight federal judges who have traveled here to preside over this event. That should tell you just how special this day is. Indeed, it is our profound privilege. <laughs> All across our wonderful country today, in every federal district court, a special naturalization ceremony is being held to celebrate Constitution Day. And what better place to host this ceremony than the home of one of our great presidents, Theodore Roosevelt, here at Sagamore Hill. We're also delighted to have with us today the entire eighth grade, 250 of them strong here from the Syosset Central School District, along with their principal, Ms. Michelle Burgett, who's here on stage, and Assistant Principals Teresa Burke and Elizabeth Burke. Several teachers and administrators, musical directors, they've helped us to plan this ceremony and you will see them participating here at various points. I also want to point out that we have students here from St. John's University School of Law, in particular the offices of the Law Student Division of the Federal Bar Association, and I want to give my personal thanks to President Paul Senecitas, Vice President Daniel Vitagliano, Secretary Andrew Fisher, and Treasurer Tetiana Skazko, along with the advisor to the Law Student Division, Professor Robin Boyle, who is here as well. The Law Student Division has been involved in the planning and execution of the details which go into an event such as this, and we are most grateful. 
The fact that we've been engaged with the eighth graders from the Southwoods Middle School and the law students from St. John's is no coincidence. Retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor made it her mission after leaving the bench to find new means to educate children about the three branches of government. With the assistance of others, she helped develop www.icivics.org almost 10 years ago. Justice O'Connor observed that we don't learn civics and how to be involved genetically, we have to learn it every generation. I wanted to teach young people in America how they can be part of the governmental structure so that they can help decide what problems to tackle and how to save them and solve them. We need to teach young people that they're going to grow up and be in charge. Justice O'Connor's legacy is at work here today. This event is emblematic of the efforts made by all of our courts and judges in the Second Circuit to continue the mission of civics education, highlighted by the workings of our Constitution, which we see in action here today. As you will see in just a few moments, we're privileged to have with us today the Chief Judge of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, the Honorable Robert Katzman, who has been the architect of the Circuit's Civics Education and Public Engagement Initiative, and we applaud his continuing efforts to bring our courts closer to our communities. Likewise, our co-sponsor, the Eastern District Chapter of the Federal Bar Association, has also been working to renew civics education nationally. Together, programs have been developed to introduce students at all levels to the workings of the federal courts and the federal judiciary, as well as the privileges and responsibilities of citizenship as Americans. The great blessing we celebrate here with much joy this morning. So bringing together eighth graders who this past year completed their curriculum on the three branches of government with our law school students for today's event was, as they say, a no-brainer. These students have the privilege of watching each of you become a citizen of the United States and to understand and appreciate the long journey that has brought each of you to this day. This naturalization ceremony represents the final step in the long process of your becoming a citizen of this wonderful country the United States of America. I know that you've heard many times that the United States is a land of immigrants. How true that is for every single one of us who enjoys the privilege of citizenship as an American. Today, 50 of you are about to take the oath of citizenship. Think about that for just a moment. You come from 27 different countries originally. 27 different countries. We have our own mini United Nations here this morning and you come here with all of the gifts and talents you've each brought to enrich the great fabric of this place we call America, our home. There are a number of people here who want to express their congratulations and share some thoughts with you about this special day. Let me begin by introducing the superintendent of this lovely piece of the North Shore of Long Island, which we know as the Sagamore Hill Historic Site. Superintendent Kelly Furman, would you please come up to the podium? Good morning. As I like to say, welcome to paradise. It's a beautiful little spot on the North Shore of Long Island, also known as Sagamar Hill National Historic Site. And I'm sure you all are very excited, as you should be. This is a very special day for you all, and congratulations ahead of time. The historic house behind me is 132 years old this year, and the former home of the 26th President of the United States. Here at Sagamore Hill, National Historic Site, the National Park Service tells the story of Theodore Roosevelt, his legacy and family life. As president, Theodore Roosevelt realized many historically significant achievements. He was an outspoken champion of civic engagement, environmental conservation, and an active, strenuous lifestyle. As a result, his le legacy is very rich. The, the value of citizenship is very important to him and to us, um, honoring his legacy here at Sagamore Hill. On July 4th, 1886, at the age of 28, Theodore Roosevelt gave a speech in what is now Dickinson, North Dakota, which included a passage that is of critical relevance today. He said, quote, much has been given us, and so much will surely be expected from us, and we must take heed to use right the gift entrusted to our care. So it is peculiarly incumbent upon us here today so to act throughout our lives as to leave our children a heritage for which we will receive their blessing and not their curse. 
We have rights, but we have correlative duties. None can escape them. We only have the right to live on as free men, as long as we show ourselves worthy of the privileges we enjoy. As new citizens of the United States of America, your new challenge is to prove yourselves worthy of the privileges citizens of the United States enjoy. As citizens, we are all accountable for doing the right thing for the benefit of each other, our children, and the world we live in. Finally, please take time to visit the many public lands there are in the United States of America, including national parks set aside in the United States for all the world's citizens to enjoy and to learn about and appreciate. And to get you started on your journey to all of the 418 National Park Service sites in the country, I'm going to give you, on your exit from the tent, a National Park Service passport book. All right, please do not mistake this for a United States passport. That is not what it is, okay? You take this to the National Park Service site you visit, and you will receive a stamp in it, and there are stamps for each one of the parks. So it's a collective kind of thing and helps you on your journey across the country because there are parks all over the country. So you're very welcome. And I started you out with your first stamp for National Park Service site, which is Sagamore Hill National Historic Site. So you don't have to worry about this one. You're all covered. <laughs> all right. So once again, congratulations. Enjoy your new citizenship. And please visit the parks. And now, this wonderful Constitution Day and naturalization ceremony has been made possible by the collaboration of many hardworking and dedicated individuals. In addition to the judges of the Federal Court for the Eastern District of New York, today's program is also sponsored by the Federal Bar Association. And it gives me great pleasure now to invite Cynthia Augello, president of the Eastern District Chapter of the Federal Bar Association, to come up and on behalf of our FBA friends and board members who are here today. Cynthia? Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Federal Bar Association Eastern District of New York chapter, I would like to first thank everybody for all the hard work that has been put into this program to make today is what, it, what it is. Second, I would like to welcome all of you and welcome the soon-to-be citizens um, of this great country. Um, as, a, as a, just a quick note, I am actually a child of immigrant parents, and I have seen firsthand the benefits of citizenship. And you have all come here today and, 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 and embarked on this journey to take advantage of opportunities that you most likely could not have gotten wherever you're coming from. So we look forward to meeting all of you and sharing this fantastic country with you. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Our Constitution Day Naturalization Planning Committee worked with the teachers and staff of the Southwoods Middle School in Syosset to engage the eighth graders in a project which would culminate with today's ceremony. The eighth graders who were here submitted essays expressing their thoughts and wishes for our American citizens. This was a tough decision for the faculty and staff, I understand, but two students have been selected as the winning essayists. Now I'm going to ask, please, Maya Kopax and Annika Shaw to please come up onto stage now to present their winning essays. Newly inducted citizens, welcome and congratulations. You are officially a U.S. citizen. It's difficult to sum up America in one letter, so let me start by sharing with you the story of my family's immigration. My grandfather came to this country in 1974 from India on a green card. 
He was inspired to leave his home for a better life that America could provide. He certainly had his fears. He would be the first in his family to leave India. He didn't have a lot of money, and he didn't have a source of income in America. He had never been on a plane, let alone traveled outside of his hometown, and he barely knew English. There were early struggles with both grandparents having to work multiple jobs and as they continued to save money and get better jobs and live in better neighborhoods. His sons both went off to great colleges and became doctors. He was running a successful practice as a dentist and was able to, to secure a bright, bright future for himself and his sons. In those first few years they spent in the US, they also learned what it was like to be an American citizen. They learned that Americans come in all colors and that the degree of freedoms and liberties people have in this country are among the best in the world. With these benefits also comes responsibility. To be a good citizen, you must stay informed about the government, support and defend the US Constitution, and participate in democracy by voting in elections. Being able to vote and participate in democracy is a huge privilege in the United States, one of among many benefits. As Americans, you are entitled to the freedom of speech to express your ideas and opinions freely without being constrained and limited to one general belief. You have the right to vote for what you believe in and choose your leader, which is a crucial part of being an American. You're obliged to serve in public court and serving in a jury. You can participate in making America a better place by contributing your own ideas. Hard working is one of the many qualities of an American citizen. So it doesn't matter what color your skin is, what language you speak, or what your beliefs are. As long as you work hard, you can become successful in America. Newly naturalized citizens of the United States of America. It is with great honor and pride that I welcome you all into the United States of America. You have traveled a long path to get here, and I congratulate you on your devotion to your life-changing achievement. From now on, you will have all the rights of citizenship, such as the right to vote, and the freedom to pursue your dreams. As much as I encourage you to enjoy the full rights that come with American citizenship, the privilege does come with great responsibilities as well. From here on out, just like the millions of other American immigrants that came before you, you will have the responsibility to better America by using your skills and freedom to keep our country safe and strong. We are not a nation united by our ethnicity, but by the ideology to create a free and fair nation filled with opportunities to achieve our dreams. The first dream achieved by the United States of America goes back all the way to July 4th, 1776, when our 13 colonies gained independence from Britain and turned into the 50 states through manifest destiny. With our new country, we wanted a new government as well. Instead of becoming a monarchy, we became a democracy, a country giving the people the right to rule by voting for what they want. Once again, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all into the United States of America as citizens who I know will follow their responsibilities and improve the United States of America through their future contributions. I now ask you all, as newly naturalized citizens of the United States of America, to go out there and pursue your dreams. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you and your families, and continue to bless the United States of America.
our sincere thanks to Maya and Annika for their beautiful thoughts and words. Congratulations and thank you for helping to make this such a special day. And I certainly want to express our thanks to all of the teachers and staff who spent the time reviewing the entries and selecting the winners, particularly during this incredibly busy opening of the school year. You are all to be uh, congratulated and certainly uh, the essayists here are emblematic of a wonderful job the school district continues to perform. And now I'm going to ask the Marine Corps Color Guard to come and present the colors. I now ask Chief Judge Katzman of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals to come to the podium and to administer the oath. And I will ask all the candidates to please stand. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Congratulations. I'm going to at least give you a little bio and I'll you back up again. Okay. Please be seated. So now you can relax. The hardest part of the day is over. All right. We are um, very fortunate today to have the Honorable Robert Katzman, Chief Judge of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. For those of you who may not know, the Second Circuit covers all of the federal courts in the state of New York, 
as well as those in Vermont and Connecticut. So Chief Judge Katzman is a very busy man, and we're truly fortunate to have him here with us today. Judge Katzman received his bachelor's degree summa cum laude from Columbia College, a master's and a PhD degree in government from Harvard University, and a JD from the Yale Law School, where he was an article and book review editor of the Yale Law Journal. After clerking on the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit for Judge Hugh H. Bounds, he joined the Brookings Institution Governmental Studies Program, where from 1981 until 1999, he was a research associate, senior fellow, visiting fellow, and acting program director. He's the author of numerous books and articles and has been an editor and contributing author of Daniel Patrick Moynihan, The Intellectual in Public Life. At the time of his appointment to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in 1999, Judge Katzman was Walsh Professor of Government, Professor of Law, and Professor of Public Policy at Georgetown University. In addition to having previously taught at Georgetown, UCLA, and the University of Oregon, Judge Katzman is currently an adjunct professor of law at NYU Law School. Over the years, Judge Katzman has served on many boards of major significance and has also served as special counsel to Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan on the confirmation of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Judge Katzman has received many awards, including having received the New York State Bar Association, Commercial and uh, Federal Litigation Section, Stanley H. Fuld Award for outstanding contributions to the development of commercial law and jurisprudence in New York State. If I were to list all of the organizations who have honored Judge Katzman, we'd be here for many days. Let me say most significantly for purposes of this very special day, without Judge Katzman's initiatives and foresight, we would li likely not be here in this wonderful venue. As you can see in the program you received today, Judge Katzman launched the Second Circuit's Civics Education and Public Engagement Initiative in 2014 to increase public awareness and understanding of the role and operations of the federal courts and to bring the courts closer to our communities. His efforts in this regard have resulted in unparalleled programs, events, and education in the courthouses of the Second Circuit as well as in the communities which the circuit covers. Your experience here today is part of that undertaking, and all of us are indebted to Chief Judge Katzman for his foresight and indefatigable spirit in achieving the formidable goals his initiative not only set in place, but has fulfilled. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker, the Honorable Robert Katzman. Thank you, uh, Judge Tomlinson. I'm just filled with admiration for all that you've contributed in so many ways to our civic education project, and also uh, so much admiration for our distinguished colleagues uh, seated on this, uh, on this stage who've also contributed so much. My fellow citizens, how good it is to say that. Our country, Yes, our country is even stronger than it was minutes ago because you are now our citizens. We are so fortunate to have you here, contributing your hopes, your aspirations, your skills, your heritages, your cultures, your music, your literature, your food to the tapestry of this nation. The American story is your story. We are a grand quilt of cultures and diversity. And I think you should always keep that part of you that is of your past and pass that on to your children and they can pass it on to their children because what makes this country great is that diversity and we are stronger and better because of that diversity. You come, as I see from countries across the globe. Think of the millions of immigrants like you who came to this country, the, the gateway of their hopes, often different in their cultures, color, religion, and personal circumstance, often with just pennies to their name. However different they might have been from one another, they shared a dream, your dream. As, as Maya and uh, 
Annika have so eloquently said, a dream of a better life in this country, the repository, indeed the engines of their dreams. And when you see the Statue of Liberty, you see the words of Emma Lazarus, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. Many of you have come at great sacrifice. You've left your homes. You've left your country. You left your work to come to this country. And I know something about the immigrant experience, being the son of a refugee from Nazi Germany and the grandson of Russian immigrants. I can still hear the accents and voices of my youth, of family members like you who believed in this country, who with their toil, their sweat, their loyalty and conviction, celebrated being citizens of the United States, who made lives here, who built families of which I am a beneficiary and of which your children will be beneficiaries. And as I said, let your children and their children know your stories. The American story is your story. We are a tapestry of cultures and diversity. And I can remember my parents taking me uh, across the country to see historic landmarks. And I can remember as a, as a child being here at, at Sagamore Hill. My, my parents were so proud of being uh, uh, citizens and they wanted their children to understand what this country is all about and not to take for granted how, how wonderful this country is. I know our newest citizens, some of whom have been scarred by oppression, hunger, war, and fear, understand the deep, deeply the value of freedom of speech and worship, the right to vote and change governments peacefully, and the guarantee of due process in a court of law. My father, who experienced uh, Nazism as a teenager, told me of the great feeling he had when he got to this country of being free, of being able to walk on the sidewalk and not in the gutter, of not having to fear being accosted because of his religion. Understanding that past has only fortified my own resolve to ensure that ours is a country that remains true to its principles of justice for all. Too many of us who are native born take for granted the freedoms we enjoy. And it is significant that we are gathered here today on Citizenship Day. For native born Americans, there is no conscious moment when they choose to be a US citizen. They are just born that way. But for you and the nearly 700,000 new, Amer new, new Americans naturalized by federal judges every year, the experience is quite different. You have to study intensively. You have to raise your hand and, 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 and to, to support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You are, all of you, a living civics lesson as we witness the final step of those born, of those foreign born who are about to become new citizens. And as you, our new citizens, raise your hand and pledge to defend the Constitution, the rest of us should take a few minutes to reflect on the liberties it grants us, to, to realize that we must be ever vigilant to protect those liberties which those of you, our newest citizens, can tell from their own experience in repressive regimes are precious and not to be taken for granted. Thinking about this wonderful day, I, I want to read to you the words of a great judge of my court, Learned Hand. And the time was, was uh, 1944. It was during World War II. And the setting was Central Park and the swearing in of new citizens. Judge Hand spoke of the spirit of liberty, which gave our immigrants, and I quote, the courage to break from the past and brave the dangers and loneliness of a strange land. Liberty that is understood as freedom from oppression, freedom from want, freedom to be ourselves. Judge Hand said, the spirit of liberty is a liberty which is not too sure that it is right. 
The spirit of liberty is the spirit which seeks to understand the, man, the minds of other men and women. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which weighs their interest along its own without bias. The spirit of liberty remembers that not even a sparrow falls to earth unheeded. I have no doubt that the spirit of liberty will thrive with you as its citizens. To become a citizen, you had to do so much. And because of your personal histories, you have a special feeling for the freedoms and liberties and rights in the constitutions. As others have pointed out already, as citizens, you will be able to register to vote, serve as a juror, enjoy all protections afforded by our Constitution. You will keep this country strong. You will make it even better as you assume the responsibilities of citizenship. Indeed, as my father said to me, it is each of our responsibilities to keep this country true to its ideals, to point out where things need to be improved, to ensure that our freedoms are vital, for the generations to come. The American dream is about aspiration and achievement. I wish for you every success, every happiness. I hope that all your dreams for, for yourselves and your families will come true. I'm so deeply honored to be here today to have this privilege of swearing you in as citizens. And I congratulate you with all my heart. Thank you. All right. Um, right now, I'm going to ask two of our ushers to come forward, please, and uh, station yourselves at each end of the platform. I'm also now uh, going to ask everyone to stand. And will the middle school eighth graders, Daniel Chan, Sabrina Guo, and Natalie Obedian, please come up to the stage and lead all of us in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'll ask the, our new citizens to remain standing and everyone else please to be seated. We are now going to proceed to distribute the certificates of citizenship. Just some uh, preliminary instructions here. As your name is called, please come up to the platform right here at this step. <clears throat> the single line will move in one direction across the stage. When you come up onto the platform, platform Judge Katzman will shake hands with each one of you. And you'll continue across the platform to receive your certificate from two of our other judges, Judge Lindsay and Judge Scarcella. Then you'll head down the steps where our Southwoods eighth grade students have something very important to give to you as a remembrance of this special day. You may then return to your seats. It's just like graduation, so. <laughs> and our ushers are here, obviously, to assist anyone who may need so. All right, first of all, Yuselin Adami, come up, please. Philadelpho Argueta Chica. Jim Bellot. Saleh Bijan. Patricia Carson. 
Ping Chan. Heading Chu. Jian Ming Shen. Marie Demonsieu. Maurice Eskai. Poonam Flora. Elena Florenzano. Yasmin Hamzavi Abedi. Zarzabska Zadwiga. Gorinder Cower. Harpreet Cower. Fatma Khan. Steve's Machu. Rena Melendez Portillo. Hemat Mohan. Estefania Navas. Hoi Nguyen. Sun Fan. Okay. The front row can be seated now if you like, all right? Next we have Horacio Nunez. <laughs> Bainam Rafi. Amrit Raleigh. Maria Reyes Caton. Joel Rodriguez Perez. Juan Rodriguez Vasquez. Edgar Roque. Saridith Sadu. Erica Sandoval Orellana. Waldi Santos Rosa. Pratiksha Shah. Chang Jun Shin. Vasiliki Siola. Gordana Skugor. Farzana Sultana. Sho Won Sun. Ala Tadmori. Nirajan Tapa. Marie Toussaint. Jordi Velez. Liliana Veras Polanco. Sixto Vivas Cedeno. Erica Wolf. And Jun Fang Zhang. Please be seated, everyone. In case you haven't yet sensed just how special this day is, we're happy to have with us one of your fellow new citizens, Miss Heading Chu, and we're very grateful to our colleague Monique Barnett and the staff of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services who brought Heading to our attention. What a special story Heading has she is currently a professor at Long Island University in Brookville, very close by here to Sagamore Hill, in the School of Library and Information Sciences. Heading is married to Jean Ming Shen, 
who was also just sworn in this morning as an American citizen. I invite Heading now to the podium to share her story with us. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you who have made today's stay so special and memorable. And I'm sure I will, it will stay in my memory and forever. Uh, I came to uh, United States in uh, 1986 as a PhD student. And at that time, an immediate reason for me to choose, choose America as my destination for, my for pursuing my education dream is that uh, this country has many more universities to choose from. Uh, and but after, I, after that, and I have learned more about, uh, about America. And uh, uh, this country provides a lot of opportunities for people uh, to succeed and thrive in education, at work, in career, and in life. And uh, America also accommodates people of different races and from different countries. And uh, we all know that America is a country of immigrants and uh, the diversity and the richness in uh, culture, religion, and values, and many other things uh, truly makes this country an ideal place to live. And also, this country is beautiful and very clean, and uh, uh, so that is, uh, that is another reason. So, uh, so I, uh, with all those uh, uh, good things that America that offers to me, and uh, I studied my own family in this country, and uh, I uh, completed my PhD degree, and I started and developed my own career uh, as a university professor. Uh, and uh, I, uh, uh, by now, I have spent more time in this country than I spent in China. And I got my green card in 1993. And at that time, I still need to go back to visit my parents uh, uh, regularly back in China. So I didn't immediately apply for uh, citizenship. But now the United States and China has established, have established a reciprocal 10-year visa program. And uh, this really prompts me to say it is time. So I now finally become a citizen of this great country. And also, uh, also with, uh, uh, this citizenship, now I can enjoy traveling to many other countries without the need of getting a visa. So that's really uh, also a uh, very good uh, plus. Uh, and my life as a, a citizen begins today. And I know that I will exercise my rights as well as fulfill my responsibilities as a citizen. And I will vote and I will participate in activities that are good for the country and I will do social justice and I will serve as a juror. And all in all, and together with my fellow citizens, and we will make America better than ever. Thank you. All right, what a wonderful formula for everybody here to emulate. A day like today does not happen on its own, and so we want to say a warm and appreciative thank you to the people who made this celebration possible. First to Superintendent Furman and the park rangers here at Sagamore Hill. Obviously none of this would have come to fruition without them. 
We thank you. We thank you not only for allowing us to utilize this magnificent national treasure, but for your ongoing and essential assistance in working out all the details which brought us to this day. We owe a great debt of gratitude to the Eastern District Chapter of the Federal Bar Association for their generosity and hard work in making this event possible. I'm going to ask the members of the board who are here just to stand, please, and be recognized for your hard work getting today together. Thank you all. Thank you as well to Ms. Emily Klonowski, Director of the Southwoods Middle School Vocal Jazz Choir, to Ms. Jean Chung, Director of the Middle School Chamber Orchestra, to Mr. Michael Saltzman, Coordinator of Fine and Performing Arts K through 12 of the Syosset Central School District, and to Principal Burgett, as well as to the faculty and administrators at Southwoods for helping to bring a vision of civics education to a culmination here today. And of course, to the students of Southwoods Middle School. We certainly appreciate your willingness We certainly appreciate your willingness to miss class this morning <laughs> in order to make this day extra special by your participation. Thank you as well to Mr. Ed McGlade and Tara Pipes and Drums for adding a layer of both joy and solemnity to this occasion through your powerful playing. And we would not have had today's ceremony without first responders, so I want to express our great gratitude to the Atlantic Steamer Fire Company right here in Oyster Bay for their kind assistance. We very much appreciate their kind assistance in having their ambulance personnel here today as well. Thank you to the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Field Director Elizabeth Miller and her staff, and most especially Ms. Monique Barnett, who is critical to our participating in and bringing this ceremony to fruition. I'd also like to acknowledge our friends from the League of Women Voters, Jane Thomas, Antonia Petrash, Pat Mayer, Patricia McCormick, and Mona Morris, who are also here and who have been speaking with a number of you today uh, as part of this ceremony. It's especially fitting on a day like today when all of you have achieved your goal of becoming citizens that we step back and understand how significant this moment is. Today, the right and the privilege of voting passes to you. So anyone who wishes to register to vote today, if you haven't done so already, these terrific volunteers will be standing by to assist you after the ceremony. And to our courthouse family, this day would not have been possible without you. I want to thank our Second Circuit Executive, Karen Milton, who's at the end of the platform. <laughs> Karen was instrumental in arranging Chief Judge Katzman's participation with us for this special day. I also want to thank District Executive Jean Corcoran, who helped us shepherd through so many of the details and layers of approval that are necessary for a day like today to happen and to uh, the law clerks who are here assisting today to see that things run smoothly, and in particular to our colleagues Mark Sanders and Brian Curran for all of our IT needs. And there are three individuals who I would be remiss if I did not thank profusely for the intense work each of them has done, and which work was crucial to this event coming to, into being. First of all, my profound thanks, as uh, well as the committees, to Orhan Araskayan. Where is Orhan? Orhan. Orhan, Orhan is the magician of Central Islip. Among so many things, he and his staff set up this entire room to ensure that today was perfect. He got the flags here. He actually prepared this medallion himself, is of his own creation, to help celebrate with the American Eagle here as well. <laughs> and our beautiful programs, as you have copies of, and all of our seating arrangements, among so many other things, have been done impeccably by Sandy Disbro. Sandy, where are you? Thank you, thank you. And last but not least, none of us would be up on this podium fulfilling this extraordinary day without Dina Miller, a member of the court as well as the National Civics Coordinator of the FBA. Dina, thank you. When we conclude in just a few moments, we're asking all of the candidates on leaving the ceremony to go up to the front porch here of the Roosevelt House where we'll be taking a group picture of all our new citizens with the judges. And I'll ask our judges to please remain robed uh, for the photographs. 
I want to let our new citizens know also that photographs taken here today will be made available to everyone through the generosity of Elizabeth Christen Photography. I know Elizabeth is here and I want to say thank you to her as well. Uh, after the photos, please come on back down the hill and join us for some light refreshments that are set up at the rear of the tent just behind you here. I now call upon the Southwoods Middle School Jazz Choir and Chamber Orchestra to perform our musical closing, My America. was incredibly beautiful. Stand up and take a bow. You deserve it, please. And I have to say, the, the band and the choir never sounded like that when I was in eighth grade, but <clears throat> that was wonderful. Thank you all so very much. As we bring this ceremony and celebration to a close, may I express the sincere congratulations of all of us here on the dais on your becoming American citizens today. Enjoy and cherish every moment of your celebration with your families and friends. Be proud of your accomplishment and your hard work to get to this day. And may this day be one of so many more to come in which your dreams are fulfilled as good citizens of this beloved country of ours. God bless each of you, and God bless the United States of America. Congratulations. <laughs> and I will now call upon uh, our Tara pipes and drums to lead the recessional.